terms of players, um, it's one of the things that is that's really important in terms of making progress. Mm -hmm. You know, we 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 have value in terms of our skills relative to how how good we are. So if somebody has an exceptional skill set, and it, uh, this is for, you know, if it, this is a student, and they think they're going to go out into the working marketplace. Uh, this would be the same for sports, men and women, uh, the boys and the girls mm -hmm. who, who want to get selected for a team. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to master skills. And whether that's like sack lane, which is first master the, uh, the skill, which is the delivery. And then with the delivery, we need a strategy, a game plan around that. And if I think back to when I started working with Elston and Mornay Morkel at the Titans, they were both young guys, and, and we did a lot of work in the off-season, and, and it's the most basic thing for a bowler is to, to, to be able, and I say it's basic, it should be the primary thing for all bowlers, but not many can do it really well, which is to master their stock ball. So master the most fundamental skill, mm -hmm. which is part of your game. And they spend a huge amount of time automating, practicing and practicing and practicing, being able to bowl their stock ball. And what I'd say to young players is that, you know, until you have a stock ball, until you have a main skill, mm -hmm. everything else is a variation. Mm. And so, you know, because quite often for young cricketers, they'd come in and say, you know, coach, I want to work on my variation. I said, well, everything that you've got at the moment is a variation because you haven't mastered your stock ball. And that's metaphorical as well. So master yeah. a skill and the greater, the better you are at that skill, that, that is going to give you value once you enter the working marketplace. Mm -hmm. So, so challenge yourself to be the most skilled in your field. And with that is you need strategy. So right. how do I apply that skill? And, and the two of them would have done a, an inordinate, inordinate amount of work to be able to master that. And and it would have paid back their work over many years. You know, they would have gone out to be the lead the attack for South Africa for 10 years, for a decade. Yeah. Uh, they would have been widely regarded in their era as one of, if not the best new ball attack in the world. Uh, both very different, obviously more they're very tall. Uh, Dale shorter and more of a swing bowler. Uh, both could bowl with exceptional pace. Um, and, and just a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of repetition, but the way that we kept interesting is that we just set little targets. Yeah. So there was always, there was always, uh, and this is going to sound again like a metaphor within a metaphor, but when they were doing their work is that there would be a target that they would, they would aim at and it would mm. give them immediate feedback. And so they, if it was successful again, the brain would go, wow, dopamine, great, you know, <laughs> it was successful. And if not, they immediately got feedback as to where they were off track. Right. So the mind operates like that. The mind operates, you know, you give it a goal and it's like, it's like setting off a missile and it will spend a lot of its journey off track. But if we give it a clear goal, it will keep on orientating itself right. towards the goal. And so, so, you know, that was really fascinating for me is actually, again, that lesson from Sackling is, is, is that mastery and the degree of mastery that, that a human can develop um, and keeping that interesting. And so other cricket stories, uh, I think for me in terms of my work, when I, I'm, I no longer direct a cricket for the West Indies, I did a, a three year stint there. It was during that time we designed the process for the 2016 World Cups. Mm. Uh, there were three World Cups, the under 19, the women and the, and the men's team. And the 19 was the Wonder World Cup and the, and, the, and the women and the men were the T20 World Cups. And they were over quite a short period of time. They were all played within a couple of, maybe perhaps even a month of each other. And, and we won all three World Cups and it's never been done before. I think, you know, barring my own, own um, success as a coach and winning championships, which is really cool. But I think possibly even more enjoyable is, is, is designing a program uh, particularly with the under 19 women, because they'd never won any World Cups before. Mm. It's designing the program and, and 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 coaching people to be able to deliver that program, because now I'm heading up the program, so I've got right. to share that understanding, which I would have learned over many years and and did a lot of losing. So here's one for the here's one for the audience. 
I did a lot of losing in the finals before I mastered how to help the team to start winning. Right. And once I understood it, is the side that I coach would win consistently because now the understanding, the, the, that understanding had been coached and it was in the dressing room. So those mm. players knew what to do and when to do it to be able to achieve their goal. And, and so I replicated that and I, and I coached that into the high performance program at the, in the Windies. So I think winning those three World Cups was, you know, that's a bit, little bit like summiting Everest, you know. It's, um, it doesn't get better than that. So yeah. I think that would, I think personally that would be, that would be the highlight really.